Yeah, so this is the Fismo synth, but played back through speakers that he's hung in the trees. And then he's standing in the middle and recording the results on his phone. You have a browser in Ableton and you can just search for any word. And I think I typed in vocal something mm. and um, I got millions of things with that word in and I pick one and put it in um, this huge chain of effects, which you can feel uh, a slash here. I mean, and here for me, it's like feeling. <laughs> so I'm looking now at the, um, the plug-in chain for that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, Let's see, altiverb, which is an impulse response reverb, which um, essentially allows you to use the echo of a real dimensional space on any sound. I'm also using Ableton's own reverb here. And then that goes into Echo Boy, which is a delay. And all, the, all these vocals are coming from different places. You can hear one is over in the left, one's in the middle, one's really far away, one's to the right. Um, which helps create a kind of spatial yeah, feel. Yeah, exactly. It's very kind of dimensional. Um, and then, yeah, looking at this group here, there's like, there's also a master effects on this group, um, giving even more space. So really, it's just so that things seem to be coming from, so you can really feel surrounded, you know, in a sort of 360 mm. way. And you said there were um, field recordings in this, track as yes, well. Yes, let's look at those. Um, my really good friend Dan, who actually contributed sounds to this track under the name Seven Rays. Um, <clears throat> he lives in a wood called Hazel Rowan Wood. A little more complex to explain. So he, he is also a bit of a synth genius. Um, oh wait, no, this isn't synth stuff. So this is um, a video that he sent me on WhatsApp. This is the sound from a WhatsApp video. Sent in, um, sent into more large reverbs. Um, let's see which ones this is a Waves Renaissance reverb. This is again to create um, a real living environment for this music to exist in. So if we put the bass back in there and some of the rising sounds, you can hear a bit of context. Yeah. Because when you listen to the track as a whole, mm. it's all part of the same yes. thing. It's one, yeah, it's supposed to be like one organism or one environment. Mm. But some of these elements on their own are quite. Oh, you can hear a chiff chaff in there, a sort of spring bird. Very strange, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> I haven't ever listened to it. Um, in this way, like separate components at the end, like this. So yeah, so let's talk a bit more about um, Dan's contribution. So he has this synth called a Fismo, which was a really obscure synth that a company called Ensonic made in the 90s. And it was never even, apparently the, the internal architecture, it was never actually finished because it was really complicated. Transwave synthesis, that's something I don't know much about. But he got really into... Um, learning how to use this thing and generating these incredible sounds. And, um, oh yeah, here we go, Fismo. So all these sounds are from this really strange synth. Um, it kind of generates notes at random like that. So he would just be playing a chord and this would all be happening just based on the, the way he's programmed it. Right quite unusual that a synth like this would have been made then and no one really knew what to make of it and it, it was never really um, a commercial success at all but I think some synth obsessives still look for them and yeah. yeah so there's that and then there's the same kind of thing but played yeah so this is the Fismo synth but played back through speakers that he's hung in the trees and then he's standing in the middle and recording the results on his phone and sending them to me. So you're hearing like synths process through the woods, basically right. in a similar way that the um, <clears throat> in a similar way that the uh, this crystal bowl was processed by mm. the cave. I like this idea of like using 
natural spaces as processing. Yeah. And so did you ask Dan to do this for you? Or, or... Well, this is a, this was the strange bit. So uh, as I told you about um, uh, walking down the road and being struck by this bolt of lightning about this idea, it just so happened that he was making these sounds on his own because he was just driven by a strange curiosity to play with that synth at, at that exact time. And we were chatting a lot. And um, he was occasionally sending me these things just out of interest, not not for inclusion on anything or not to suggest to collaborate or anything at all. He was just doing it. He sent me that. He sent me this one. Um, and it was in exactly the same key as my rising tone. And right. I just dropped it in and like it was immediately that was that. <laughs> yeah. It was just so obviously supposed to be there. 